Hello and welcome to Kinesiology 336, Nutrition for Health and Exercise Performance. My name is Jessica Duan Rodriguez and I will be your instructor for this course. So due to the online nature of this course, hopefully all of you guys have um, realized that it is going to all be online. So we um, are going to have weekly modules, weekly um, lectures that I'll be posting for you guys along with other information to help you finish assignments and get everything out of this course that you possibly can. Um, if at any time you do have any questions, I don't have official office hours, but you can always reach me via email. And my email address is um, as listed here on this slide, jduhon at csusm.edu. Now, um, this is going to be the first of many lectures, um, actually weekly lectures that you'll have. Um, they'll all be audio and all following the slides as this one is today. Um, but for, for today, what we're really going to go over is do a basic introduction of the course. Okay, so we are going to talk a little bit about sports nutrition, what we're going to look into, um, what's expected of you. Um, so we'll go through the syllabus, go through the course schedule, um, and if, then Again, if you have any questions, please go ahead and shoot me an email and I can hopefully clear up some, some things for you guys, okay? So again, we're gonna just do a brief introduction to sports nutrition, nutrition go over the syllabus, and we'll also talk about your first assignment and that will be due next, uh, by the end of this week, actually. All right, so hopefully you guys all made your way to Google, uh, courses, which you should have if you're listening to this right now, um, and downloaded the syllabus, okay? The syllabus is lo located on that first um, <clears throat> uh, screen. You should see course syllabus, be able to download it. It should be right at the top of the page, um, right by the news forum, okay? Um, so just starting off looking at the syllabus, the course description is there for you guys. Um, again, my email address, if, if you uh, ever need to locate it, it, is on the syllabus as well. Um, but you guys can go ahead and read through the course description on your own. Um, we're going to just kind of go through everything else um, that's necessary. Okay, so required text for this course. I will say now that you do need to get the book. Okay. Um, the newer versions do have an access code, I believe, that comes with them. However, that is not entirely necessary for this course. If you do buy a new book, um, that is fine. It's totally up to you. Um, and you can use that access code to help you study, get other resources, and things like that. However, we will not be utilizing the access code. So renting the book is fine. Um, even if you guys want to, I don't know, maybe share a book, if you've got a friend taking the course and you guys can study together, um, whatever works for you, just make sure that you do have a copy of the book because it will be essential, as you'll see coming up in a few weeks when we have case studies, and it will also help you study, okay? So the required text is Sports Nutrition for Health Professionals by Natalie Muth. Okay, the ISBN number is there for you guys. It is available at the CSUSM bookstore as well as Amazon and other um, book retailers that you, you can find online. Okay, um, there is another recommended book. Uh, this is not required, but if you do want additional um, resources to study with or um, if you're interested in sports nutrition and just want another resource for you. Nutrition for Sports and Exercise is another good resource to have in kind of in your back pocket if you're looking to go into this. All right, so that is the required text and other uh, materials will be located on Cougar Courses. Um, if you've kind of navigated Cougar Courses or the, the, the course shell already, you'll see that we do have um, the courses divided, I have it divided up into weeks. So each week a new module will open and you'll be able to see what's um, due for that week, okay? So it'll have all of your notes, um, PowerPoint notes, um, and uh, PowerPoint audio, okay? Now I will say when, when I do post an audio, um, I will post the slides that go with it. However, the slides do not include all of the information. I will be adding to that as I'm lecturing. So you guys wanna make sure that you are listening to lecture you are looking at those slides and you're also reading the text for um, that particular section, okay? So make sure that you're staying up to date on Cougar Courses. 
um, for all of the information that you do need. All right. Um, as we go down the syllabus, you can see course objectives there. Again, I'm not going to read through each one individually. You guys can read through that on your own time. But basically, after the course is completed, um, hopefully you will have a good understanding of these 11 objectives um, and um, be able to um, kind of um, build upon your knowledge of nutrition and dealing with an athletic population or just a population who is um, looking to get healthy and looking to increase their um, either exercise um, regimen or also um, kind of be that performance base with, with our athletes. Okay, so moving on in the syllabus, you can find the assignments. So there will be um, uh, various assignments as we go throughout the semester. Okay, and I do have them outlined below for you guys, but I will always introduce a um, assignment before you guys have to complete it. Okay, so um, as you'll see when the modules begin to open up, um, your assignment will be listed there. There will be a place for you to turn it in. Um, everything will be done um, through Cougar courses. Okay, so I'm um, should not be getting any assignments emailed to me. They should all be going through Cougar courses. Um, and only questions emailed to me, okay? So each assignment is going to be due on the date specified for the syllabus, okay? Um, the, you will have a specific time frame, and once that time frame is up, uh, you will see that the assignment will close, okay? So if it's not in before the assignment closes, then um, there will be a penalty um, uh, with a deduction of 10% um, each day that it's late, okay? Um, so if we go through the assignments now, uh, your first assignment will be a behavior change project and journal, okay? And we're actually going to go through that on this audio. So um, once we're done with the syllabus and we get into kind of an introduction to sports nutrition, I will go ahead and introduce this assignment to you guys and you'll have your first kind of portion of this assignment due. But basically with the behavioral change project and journal, um, you will be choosing um, a nutritional behavior that you would like to change over the course of the semester. Okay, so this could be anything that you guys want. You're all kinesiology majors, so you should um, kind of have a little bit of knowledge of what a nutrition-related goal would be. Um, so it could be you want to, you know, maybe lose 10 pounds or, you know, you want to gain 5 pounds of muscle or you just want to start eating more whole grains or you want to start eating more protein or, you know, whatever that may be. Um, so that's going to be up to you guys. It just needs to be nutritionally related. Okay. And so once you pick your goal, what you're going to do for the remainder of the semester is you're going to track it in a journal of some sort. So again, this is going to be um, kind of your choice on how you want to track your goal, but you just need to have it tracked throughout the semester to see so that um, at the end, you can show me that um, either you reached your goal or you didn't, okay? So um, that's going to be the behavior change project, looking at a nutritional goal, okay? The point breakdown is shown for you there, and I will also have another rubric posted um, once the assignment is due, okay? The next assignment is going to be your diet analysis nutrition plan project. Um, and this is going to kind of be um, the bulk of your semester, okay? This is kind of like the big project that we have, okay? So it is a four-part assi assignment, okay? So what you're going to do is the first portion, you're going to basically track your eating. And um, over a certain amount of days, see what foods you're eating, how much of, uh, of, of each food, each beverage, um, and do a recall on that. You'll analyze that food, um, kind of looking at macronutrients um, and things that you may be lacking or things that you may have too much of in your diet for that particular time frame. And then you will be kind of writing a recommendation of um, what needs to be changed, okay, and, and how that needs to be changed. Um, and what would be more recommended, if, especially if um, you do have a goal in mind, okay? Again, the point breakdown is shown for you there, and um, as the semester continues, you will see that we will do this um, 
this project in parts. So um, every couple of weeks you will have a different portion that's due, but again, that will be explained um, further as we go along. Um, next, you will have chapter quizzes, okay? So those will be 10 points each, and they will be all done via Cougar courses, okay? So um, every time you do have a chapter quiz that is coming up, it will be in the particular module for the particular week. And you will have an, from when the module opens on Monday at midnight, so 12 a.m. it will open, and you will have all the way until Sunday at 11.59 to complete that quiz. Okay, so li listening to your slides, um, listening to the audio, um, reading the chapters, taking the quiz, you have a full week um, pretty much to do that. Okay, um, and we will also have case studies. Now the case studies, it's gonna be the same case. So they will um, open on Mondays, you'll have until Sunday at 11.59 p.m. to turn in those case studies. Okay. Again, everything, all information will be on Cougar courses for you as well for that. Okay. All right. So moving on to exams. So we will have a, a total of four exams in this class. Okay. So all of them will be 75 points each and the final exam will not be cumulative. Okay. I'm going to stress that again. It was not cumulative. Um, all exams will include information from uh, the audio lectures, from the book, um, and from any other extra material that I may post on Cougar Courses. Okay, they all will be online through Cougar Courses as well. And uh, again, you will have them available for a week. So when the, core, um, when the module opens until the module closes uh, or the exam closes uh, on Sundays at 11.59. Okay. Um, I will not be giving up makeup quizzes. Um, you do have that full week to do it. So, I mean, makeup exams, sorry. You do have that full week to, to take the exam. So, um, unless there is some form of an emergency um, and you do have uh, some kind of documentation to provide for me, um, only then will an exam be allowed to be taken at a different time, okay, or reopened so that you can take the exam. So as we continue, um, kind of just go to the grade breakdown and scale because the exams portion, sorry, this is kind of repeating itself, but looking at the grade breakdown and scale, we can see that we do have our various assignments at 340 points with our exams one through four at 75 points each. That's going to be a total of 300 points, bringing the grand total of points in this course to 640, okay? Um, so there is the grading scale listed for you there. So you can see anything from a 90% uh, to 100% would be in that A range. Um, B range would be um, 89 to anything below till um, we got 80% and then so on. Okay, so um, I will be following this grading scale whenever I do post final grades. So wherever your grade lies, that's what um, the letter grade that you would get accordingly. Okay, um, there, due to the writing requirement of the school, you guys all are, should be pretty much aware of the writing assignment or the writing requirement. So there will be a lot of writing in this course. A lot of it um, could be um, subject to opinion, um, but a lot of it is also gonna be based on the book, okay? So making sure that you guys do get that book and um, you're able to complete assignments accordingly. <clears throat> okay, um, there are some tips also listed here for you guys on how to excel in this class. Um, so if you guys want to go over that um, on your own time, it maybe give you a little bit of insight on how to study and how to get through this course with a um, pretty good um, passing grade. All right, so next I want to go over the tentative class schedule. Um, again, it's, we're not meeting in class, but this is what we're going to follow um, for this course. Okay, 
And if we look at week one, of course, that's what this audio lecture is for. So it's doing introduction to the syllabus. And then in a second, we'll go over some intro to sports nutrition. And you see that your activity due will be your behavior change goal. Okay, again, every time you see an activity um, due in that activity section of the syllabus, then um, that will be due by Sunday at 11.59 p.m. always, okay, for that week. Okay, so this week you'll see that your behavior change goal will be due at 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. Okay, so as we continue through the weeks, you see that we'll start off with our, car, our carbohydrates um, um, as we, we start the, looking at our macronutrients. So we'll look at carbohydrates and proteins as well as fat, and then we'll go into vitamins, minerals, water, and electrolytes, and then you'll have your first exam the fourth week of class. Okay, again, you'll have your chapter quizzes and your case studies as well. Okay, again, all listed on Cougar courses and due Sunday, um, the Sundays at 11.59 p.m. Okay, as we go on, we'll look at exercise uh, thermoregulation, we'll look at fluid balance, we'll also look at general nutrition guidelines, um, and also looking at uh, dietary guidelines for Americans that um, are established by um, the nutrition and uh, dietetics agencies, and then we'll also look at fundamentals of exercise, physiology, and nutrition, and how that kind of relates to each other and that, that um, coincides. Okay, if you look on the activity portion for the from weeks five to seven, you can see that um, we do have two portions of your diet analysis plan project due. We have your food diary, and then we have your nutritional assessment. Okay, so then now you can kind of see how we're breaking down that assignment and things will be due at certain times that is going to give you uh, that time to complete the whole assignment. So not everything's going to be due at one time for that. Okay, after um, we look at chapters eight, five, and six, you'll have exam two, and then we'll go into spring break when nothing's gonna be expected of you, obviously, because there is no class that week. All right, moving into weeks nine, 10, and 11, We'll look at some nutrition strat strategies to enhance performance. We'll also look at various nutrition stat status, or, or strategies, excuse me, for um, specific athletes, okay? So focusing anywhere ranging from wrestlers to endurance athletes, okay? And we'll also look at body composition, and that's when your uh, anthropometric data for your nutrition analysis will be due. Okay, that leads us into exam three, um, weeks 13, 14, and 15, going through weight management, looking at eating and exercise disorders, which um, is actually a really big part of nutrition for our athletes. Um, not all the time do we think that our athletes may struggle with an eating or exercise disorder, but we're finding that it is more common. So we want you guys to be prepared for that um, and know how to handle those situations and know how to spot um, eating your exercise disorders, okay? And we'll also go into uh, nutritional supplements and ergogenic aids um, <clears throat> and talk a little bit about um, kind of what's out there and, and what's, um, what is good for athletes and what may not be good for athletes. Okay, and then that will lead us into our final exam. So you can see that it's about three chapters per an exam, except for exam one, we do have um, four uh, chapters from that exam, but the following three exams will only consist of three chapters each. Okay, and then you can see here, it ends with um, week 16 with your final exam during exam week, uh, final exam week. Okay, so again, if there are any questions about the syllabus, go ahead, shoot me an email um, just to make sure that you do clarify things um, so that you can get started with the modules, but hopefully that everything will be kind of self-explanatory as um, each week opens up and you're able to view the files that are located on Google Courses. Okay, so 
let's kind of do a little bit of introduction and talk about what we're going to uh, study in this course a little bit more. So why study sports nutrition? Okay, so there are a few reasons as to why sports nutrition would be beneficial for you as a kinesiologist to know. Okay, um, it is a rapidly growing field. So um, as it grows, as it uh, more positions open up, as we have more athletes, as we have um, more people even just wanting to get healthy, um, and wanting to exercise more and eat right, um, we've noticed that the field is growing for individuals who have a knowledge of sports nutrition and are able to give sound advice uh, to individuals who are needing it or wanting it. Okay, so it is a growing field where we can see um, many possibilities for career and for um, just even job development and, and things like that as, it, as you go on through your career. Um, in sports nutrition, you do get to work with individuals who um, are usually wanting or seeking that active lifestyle or that healthy lifestyle. Um, so especially working with athletes, um, we usually see that they are fairly active and very highly competitive. So it's usually very rewarding and very um, exciting to work with these types of individuals because um, they know that it's going to take a lot. They know that they're going to have to work hard, and they're um, they're okay doing that. They 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 want that. They seek that that type of lifestyle, and it's it's really uh, fun and interesting to be part of that competitive um, nature of of being an athlete. So it is a very um, fun field to be in, and it's a very growing field to be in. Okay. Um, another thing that you get to do as being in sports nutrition is helping athletes interpret research and determining if um, the info or that, that, that research that they are reading is going to relate to their sport and individual needs. There's a lot of information floating around out there, um, especially with access to the internet and things that people can just randomly find online. I mean, these days you can Google anything. Um, but is it actual information that is sound and can that be applied to their body or to their sport? Okay, so you're going to be, um, as a nutrition professional, it's going to be expected of you to stay up on current research, um, even as a kinesiology professional, up on current research and knowing what's going on and what's true and what's not, and kind of how to, how to um, filter through the information to provide the best possible info for our athletes and to our clients or whoever you may be working with. So sports nutrition is a um, really exciting field and it's really growing and um, hopefully if you guys are interested in this um, career or in this aspect of kinesiology that you guys do take um, a good kind of, um, you, you take something away from this course that can help you in the future. Okay, so again, just going over the concepts that we'll cover in this course, we will look at micro and macronutrients. Um, again, this will be mainly for um, athletic competition. Okay, so we will go over some general recommendations, but um, we will also look at um, sports-specific recommendations. Okay, this is a, a nutrition class for kind of that health performance um, type aspect. So looking at it from that angle and not just what are the general re recommendations for healthy adults, looking at, okay, what are the general, re what are the recommendations for an athlete, okay? Look at thermula uh, thermoregulation and fluid balance. We'll look at exercise physiology and nutrition, body composition, weight management, again, those eating and exercise disorders, dietary guidelines and recommendations um, specific to athletes, and then those nutritional strategies looking at optimal performance. And then again, going into supplements and ergogenic aids. Okay, and again, if you have any questions about what's gonna be covered in the class, go ahead and give me an email.
So for the remainder of this audio lecture, I'm going to be uh, explaining to you guys your behavior change assignment. Now, all information for this uh, assignment should be located on Cougar Courses. You should be able to find a link under week one that gives you uh, the instructions and how the assignment's going to flow. But I do want to introduce it here so that you can um, begin working on this and your behavior change goal will be due Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Okay, so when we start thinking about goal setting or we start thinking about um, a behavior change, we always have to take into account the readiness of the individual to change, okay? If someone is not ready to make that change in their life or to um, kind of take that goal seriously, most of the time we don't see that the individual actually changes, okay? That that behavior actually changes. So when we're looking even at not just ourselves, but as maybe we're working with an athlete, um, we have to assess their readiness to actual make that, actually make that change, okay? Now, usually when we are working with athletes, they do recognize that when there are improvements in exercise and nutrition, that is essential to them ha having um, success or to them increasing their performance, okay? And that's the, the beauty of working with an athlete. Um, they usually do um, have that understanding that, okay, yes, it's going to take a change in exercise. It's going to take a change in nutrition if I want to be successful in the sport that I'm in, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, for the everyday person who's trying to get healthy and wants to exercise more, which you will find that you will work with as well, um, it might be a little bit more difficult because there's not that um, drive or that um, kind of I don't want to say hardcore drive, but it's just a little bit different than when we're working with an athlete who that's kind of their profession, okay, or that's kind of their life, or as opposed to an individual who is really just looking kind of at doing this as a recreational type activity, okay? So when we are trying to make changes to exercise and nutrition or a specific behavior related to exercise and nutrition, it is going to require specific changes in our everyday lifestyle. Yes, we need to change the way that we eat. Yes, we need to change the activities that we perform. But in doing that type of thing, um, it's going to be a lifestyle. It's not just going to be something that we change for a week and we see the results immediately. No, it's going to be something that takes um, several weeks to months to maybe even years, depending on what the goal is. So really, when we are looking at these types of lifestyle changes, um, it's going to require that readiness to make a change, okay? And so we're not going to go over the full kind of behavioral change continuum where we look at the different stages of change and that the, the different kind of um, preparations that are taken to get to the stage of readiness to change. But you have to understand that there is that one time when you have to be ready to take the next step into actually um, kind of pursuing that goal and, and writing it down and making that change, okay? So before you guys um, put pen to paper and begin to write down your goal of your behavior change goal, um, I want you guys to consider where your readiness to change is. Um, you know, kind of think about what types of goals you have or if you don't have any goals, what kind of goals do you want to achieve? Um, and kind of start assessing where are you in that continuum of, of re being ready to change. Are you, um, are you ready? Are you kind of contemplating being ready? Um, are you not contemplating it at all? Just think about kind of what you want to achieve in your life and, and where you're at. Okay, and then I want you guys to start um, setting your goal, okay? And the way that we're going to set our behavior change goal um, is we are going to follow what we call a SMART goal template, okay? Now, when we are setting a goal, we have to make sure that there are certain aspects of that goal that are um, written down, okay? We always want to write down the goal so we have it um, plain in front of us, able to read it. It's not just something that's kind of in our minds, but we can look back on it, we can read through it, and we can make sure that we're um, 
striving for that particular goal. Okay, but as we go through the SMART goal template, this will help you establish your goal and make it something that is um, more attainable or um, more um, kind of real to you as you as you write it down. Okay, so um, as we go through, S is going to be for specific. So this is going to be um, kind of just what is your goal? Okay, what exactly do you hope to achieve? Well, if we don't have a specific goal, then we're not going to achieve it. Okay, um, if we have something that's very general and um, we're not really trying to reach one specific thing, it's less likely that we will attain that goal. Okay. Um, the next thing that your goal needs to be is it needs to be measurable. Okay, so how will you know if you've achieved your goal? Okay, how are you going to measure it? Are you, um, if you're planning to lose five pounds, how are you, how are you going to know that that's happening? Are you going to weigh yourself weekly? Are you going to weigh yourself daily? Are you going to weigh yourself monthly? Are you going to measure your waist circumference to see if you're losing inches? Okay, be as specific as possible in how you are going to tell if you are progressing even towards your goal. Okay, are there small goals um, that can help you achieve the larger goal? Okay, and what, how, how is that going to kind of be mapped out and how are you going to measure that? Okay, A is going to be for attainable. So is this a goal um, you believe you can real realistically achieve with a moderate amount of effort, okay? So we don't want to um, write down a goal that is gonna be kind of way out there for us and probably never gonna attain it, okay? Because if it's not attainable and if we can't realistically achieve it, then it's going to be harder for us to stick with the change and stick with the lifestyle, okay? And then we won't really see that behavior changing in our life. Okay, so make sure that this is a goal that you can realistically achieve, okay? R is going to be for relevant, okay? So um, what this basically means is, is it relevant to you? So when you achieve this goal, how will you feel? Will you feel accomplished? Will you feel five pounds lighter? You know, what does it mean to you to achieve this goal? Okay. And then T is going to be for time bound. And we always want to make sure when we set a goal, we do set a time frame that we want to achieve this goal. With, okay, so um, for your goal, the time is kind of chosen for you, right? We do have the, the semester. So by the due date and by the end of the semester, you're um, going to track and see if you have um, actually met the goal that you've set, if you've had that behavior change happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you're looking at time bound, when do you want to achieve this goal by? Now you have a due date on the syllabus, okay? So you can use that due date. You can set it before that. Completely up to you guys, but you do have the pretty much about three, month, three months or so to complete this goal and to see if you do actually achieve it, okay? So what you're going to also do as you're tracking this goal is I want you to keep track of you know, if there were any um, things that kind of held you back or slipped you up or any negative things that you found, any positive things um, that you found as you're going through um, this behavior change process of this nutritional goal that you've made. Um, and just track your feelings, track your thoughts, track, you know, what happened from day to day and just keep that journal so that you can write a very comprehensive summary of your experience as you're going through this goal. Uh, or this nutritional goal for this behavior change, okay? So when you're setting your goal, I want you to make sure that you're following this SMART goal format. Okay, so for Sunday, January 29th, um, you will need to turn in your behavior change goal by 11.59 p.m., okay? So this is just the goal. Just what do you want to accomplish nutritionally? Make sure it does have that nutritional aspect involved. So it can be, you know, maybe you want to run a half marathon by the end of the semester. You want to be able to do that. Okay, that has an exercise portion, but add something nutritionally to that. Maybe um, you want to have 
um, make sure that you have enough energy to run a marathon also. So make sure that your carbohydrate intake is correct. Um, just have that nutritional aspect involved. It can be whatever you want. It just has to do deal with nutrition, okay? Make sure that your goal is in that SMART goal format, okay? There is a template that is provided um, under the uh, behavior change goal assignment, okay? So make sure you download that template. Um, it gives you prompts to follow, questions to answer um, in that form so that you can make sure that your goal is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. Okay. All right. So if you guys have any questions about the nutritional goal or the behavior change goal that's due on the 29th, go ahead, shoot me some emails. Um, I'll get back to you guys um, within uh, probably a day or so with that. But um, yeah, so that's all for this week. Just make sure on January 29th, you do have that goal turned in. Um, go ahead, start getting your book. Um, if you haven't done so already, I'm giving you guys pretty much a, kind of like a week um, to get your book and get everything necessary for the course before we actually jump into any um, solid information. And we'll start with carbohydrates um, on next Monday. All right.